Hey guys, welcome back to Eagle Talk, and we're here with Dr. Devasla, and we're going to be talking about depression. So, I feel like all of us have actually felt depressed at one point in our lives, but what do you think really distinguishes someone who is in a state of depression from being sad? Th there's a big difference between merely being sad and being depressed. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of it is how chronic it is, how long it lasts, and the severity. Most of us have had sad periods that have lasted one, two, three days, even a week. In order to get a diagnosis of major depressive disorder, for example, you need to feel that way two weeks or longer. Mm -hmm. And then I would say to everyone, think of the saddest day you've had and think of that lasting for two weeks. It is something so debilitating you can't get your head around it. In addition, that pattern has to be characterized not only by sad mood, but other things like loss of pleasure in your usual activities or things that you enjoy, poor concentration, feelings of worthlessness, trouble with sleep, trouble with appetite, problems with concentration, and sometimes even suicidal thoughts. So it's far more far-reaching. This is not a sad day. Human beings have sad days. We're not supposed to be happy every single day. That's different than depression, which is a very debilitating mental illness. I feel like even with your research um, on social media with mm -hmm. college students, mm -hmm. yeah. what do you think um, things like FOMO, if you're missing yeah. out, what yeah. do you think mm -hmm. things like those actually mm -hmm. contribute to our feelings mm -hmm. of sadness? Things like FOMO or the fear of missing out definitely can contribute to a sense of a student feeling like, I'm being left out of the fun. And so if a person's already feeling sad, it could probably help them feel worse, like they're being sort of left out of the action. But even for a person who's having a good day, it can definitely create a pang inside of them. One of my goals in sort of student mental health is to help people sort of fill that sense of emptiness, have that core sense of fullness so that you say, I would have liked to have been invited to that birthday party, but it's not a deal breaker. It's not a game changer. And so I think that FOMO is one of those things where if you're already having a tough day, it could bring you down. But if you really have that solid core, in many ways, it's just sort of a breeze that goes by. And do you feel like even little things, like just saying hello to someone mm -hmm. that you don't know, mm -hmm. or just giving a smile to a stranger, do you think those things can actually affect someone's state of depression? Well, you would be surprised how far a little kindness goes in this world. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the tough thing with a person who really does have depression. Many times, they are so shattered by the disorder, they're not even attending to the stimuli around them. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means is that your, hey, how you doing? You look great. It's nice to see you, may be met with sort of a flatness. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I think that offering up kindness as many times a day as possible is not only good for the world, but it's really good for you. And I often give people a sort of a kindness prescription. I want each day a dozen times for you to just sort of give that hello, smile to a clerk, to a fellow student, to a professor, to a person who's working in an office here on campus. You'd be amazed at how much better you'll feel at the end of the day. And you never do know whose life you're going to touch, who's already having a tough day. So what do you think differentiates someone who has social anxiety disorder versus someone who is just really a shy person? 